One of the easiest, and in my view, safest ways to get images from the camera to the computer is via a card reader. In the 30 years of my own digital photography, this remains my favourite. A card reader is an inexpensive plug-and-play USB device that has slots for the common media cards we use. We just remove the media card from our camera, slip it into the card reader, the card is automatically read and the bridge downloader window will pop up automatically. I know some people do connect their camera directly to their computer and if you use this method you should refer to the camera's manual on how to do this. In the interests of keeping this simple we can ignore both the advanced options and also the apply metadata. In fact all we really need is the standard downloader. The nice to know extras we can catch up with another time. In the Create Subfolders drop down menu, select something you're comfortable with, like day, month, year. Your images will be downloaded into folders automatically created to reflect the day they were shot. So if you shot images on three separate days, expect to see a folder created for you for all three days. I store my images in folders for the year. Within that year, I have a folder for each month. And Bridge will create those subfolders with the shot date for me. I'll often add a location after the shot date, just for my own information. It's not essential, of course, but the date keeps the folders nicely in order for browsing and having the location added generally works for me. I choose not to convert to DNG or delete the originals when downloaded. And I don't save copies at this stage either. These are all just preferences, none of them are vital. I like to back up my images once I've been through them. But I also like my file structure of the backup to match exactly my originals. There's less potential for errors. I always remove saved images from my media card by formatting the card in the camera. And of course I don't do this until I have my raw images saved in two separate locations. The open Adobe tick box is just another option. That allows Bridge to open automatically when your download is complete. It's your choice. Now before we download any images, we don't have to have Photoshop or Bridge open. In fact, as you can see here, I'm on my desktop and I don't have any programs running apart from the one that's recording the screen and my voice. So when I put the card in the reader, it's going to be read just as before. So we do need to make sure we've got the shot date right, date, month and year. And once we actually set this, this will remain until we change it. So next time we download images, we won't need to change that. We do need to go to the location though, because if I click browse, we're going to download the images into my raw image folder or my drive into the year 2023 and of course we need to select the 11th month. It just so happens that we happen to be on the last day of November. So when I click to select the folder we can just get the media. You'll notice too that on this occasion I have ticked to open Adobe Bridge once the download is complete. So it is a good thing that once we set the location and what our shot date folder is, it will keep that for the next time we download. Now as you look at these folders, this folder here was already there. I was aware of the folder of images I shot today. Nothing of consequence in there, but maybe there's a few from a couple of days ago, some kookaburras that I shot, some birds. But to be honest, I wasn't aware that I had a rogue 
folder from the 13th of November. I think I only shot about half a dozen images or a dozen images. It wasn't significant, so I left them to download later. And of course, I've forgotten them, but no damage done. There they are. These things are going to happen. To bring this video to a close, I'd like to show you the information that we can see below the thumbnails in Bridge once we've downloaded our images, because that can be quite useful. I'm going to open up the folder for the 28th of November, and you can see the images within. Now at the moment, we've got no information below them at all, not even the file name. Going down to the bottom right, you can see I've got my thumbnails only box ticked. As soon as I untick that, you can see quite a difference. Now, as you can see here, we can choose up to four items of information below each of our thumbnails, as well as the file name. Now, you can see what my choices are here, but they may not be relevant to you. I quite like to see the camera details because it helps me with my videos. I like to see the file size in megabyte because it does help me to indicate which images are high resolution and which aren't. And so does the pixel value below that. But I also choose the date the image was shot because I find that useful while making my videos. But of course, we're all going to choose something different. So from the 20 options, or where do we find them? We need to go to the top left of the screen to Edit, Preferences. There's quite a lot here, but we can just concentrate on the thumbnails. Now here you can see I've got the four tick boxes which are relevant to the information you can see below my thumbnails. So I can turn them off. I can choose to just have one piece of information, two, or all four. But to change what's within the information, let's just take the date created, what I can do is choose from all of these options. Now, I'm going to suggest that as amateurs, most of those are not going to be that useful to us. These are the ones that are useful to me. Once I've set them, they'll remain there all of the time. Now, as you can see by the change of images on screen, I have switched from my raw images to my completed images. And you'll notice in the top row, I've got four images that as thumbnails, they all look more or less the same. And you can see exactly what I've done. The original is the color one far left. I've done some creative work on one of them and another is monochrome. But there's a second monochrome and with the settings I've got below my thumbnail, a quick glance at the pixel value, and we can see that it's 1816 by 1080. Also, the file size, which is just 926KB, that's allowing me to easily identify that as a lower res image, which I've set aside for a potential competition in my camera club. The others are all high resolution. In the next video, we'll start to do some work in Adobe Camera Raw on our original images. So I'll see you there.